To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. So, my dear children, in the earlier chapter, we discussed about the diseases caused because of change in the lifestyle of human beings. Now, within this chapter, we are going to start a fresh new topic related to the lesson biosphere. Now, here we are going to discuss about sustainable development and the environmental management. So, what is the thing or what kind of a thing is this sustainable development? Sustainable means what? My dear children, sustainable means here we are going to use the resources and the things contained within our environment efficiently and my dear children we are safeguarding these resources and things contained within the environment so that the future generations can also use these things we are using like to the uh, to up to the maximum potential and also my dear children we are safeguarding these sources and uh, things so that the future generation can also use these things okay this is what do you mean by the sustainable development the sustainability okay so my dear children sustainable development is the smart use of natural resources by safeguarding the balance of the environment in a such a manner that future generations can use them in the future so like i said this is the smart use my dear children smart use means we're going to use it up to the maximum potential okay however we are also going to safeguard these things we are safeguarding these things so that the future generations can also use these things this is what do you mean by the sustainable development in short okay so here it is given environmental management is the maintenance of natural resources by using them in an environmental friendly manner to fulfill the needs of man so environmental management is the maintenance of natural resources by using them in an environmental friendly manner to fulfill the needs of man so my dear children what do you mean by this the environmental management so environmental management is the maintenance of natural resources so here we are going to maintain natural resources my dear children okay here we are going to maintain natural resources so maintenance of natural resources management of natural resources okay like what like why like in which kind of a way so like by using them in an environmental friendly manner that means my dear children we have to use these resources contained within the environment so that they would not harm the environment that we are living in in simple usage of resources contained within the environment without damaging these things or without polluting these things this is what do you mean by right this is what do you mean by the proper management of the environment or else in simple the environmental management so here we are going to maintain the natural resources and the things contained within our environment so that they would not harm so these actions that we are going to carry out uh, in the usage of these natural resources would not harm the environment at all this is what do you mean by friendly environmental management so once again my dear children sustainable development means here we are going to right sustainable development here we are going to do a certain kind of a use actually this use is much more uh, health much more friendly friendly in the sense my dear children here we are going to use these resources up to its maximum potential level okay 
But the speciality here is that even though we are using these things up to its maximum potential level, right? We are not going to destroy these things. We are not going to exhaust these things. Okay. We are going to safeguard these things while we are getting the maximum usage of it. So why do we need to safeguard these things? Because it's very important to keep these things, protect these things for the future generations. So using natural resources or any other things in our environment, right? up to its maximum potential and also safeguarding these resources so that the future generation can also use is referred to as the sustainable development. Then environmental management means my dear children here we are going to manage or here we are going to use different substances okay different things contained within our environment okay. We are going to use different things, different substances contained within the environment in an eco-friendly manner. Eco-friendly means my dear children, right? We are using these substances so that the environment is not getting harmed or getting minimally harmed. Okay. We are using natural substances, natural resources so that the environment is not getting harmed or not uh, minimally harmed. Okay. This is what do you mean by the proper environment management, proper environmental management. So sustainable development and proper environmental management are both of these things are very important, right? Both of these things are very important for our survival of the biosphere. Okay, right then. Under that, my dear children, we are going to discuss about several sustainable practices okay several sustainable practices you also you know that when we take the sustainable management my dear children or the sustainable development we can practice out several several kinds of things several several steps when we are practicing practicing out sustainable development here we are using resources now so while using these resources it's 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 very important right while using these resources it's very important to safeguard these things and also get the maximum use of these things as well. So, when we are discussing about the sustainable development, first and foremost, it's important to focus about agricultural sustainable development uh, processes. Okay, agricultural sustainable development processes. Why is that? Because mainly, my dear children, even though we are now, even though we are now uh, fo focusing about the industrialization, my dear children, however, we are producing our goods, especially our food items, mainly through agriculture. For agriculture, now we are using different kinds of machines. That is why actually we are mentioning that thing. This is also being industrialized right now because we are using different kinds of machines in an industrial scale and we are now uh, human beings or the society is now producing these agricultural crops and agricultural uh, you know food items right goods in an extent we are right people can buy these products by the supermarket or by a commercial market so that is why we are saying that this agriculture is also being industrialized actually it is true my dear children right up to a certain extent it is true however even though it is being industrialized up to a certain level right we have to we can follow out different kinds of steps that will help to develop right and also manage these resources that we used in our agricultural purposes, right? So the management of these things will definitely develop the sustainability of the environment and also the resources contained within the environment. So first of all, my dear children, we'll be going to discuss about what? About the sustainable agricultural uses, 
sustainable agricultural users or sustainable agricultural processors. Now let's see. So here it is given. A sustainable development could be expected by reforestation, use of traditional knowledge and technology, carbon footprint, minimizing food miles, waste management and energy management. So my dear children, there are different kinds of, right? There are different, different kinds of sustainable practices. Okay. So, this sustainable development can be expected mainly by reforestation. Reforestation. Then, use of traditional knowledge and technology. We can use traditional knowledge and technology because you know that, my dear children. Uh, let's go for the reforestation first. So, if you take reforestation, my dear children, mainly because of reforestation, right, you know that we can increase the vegetative right or the uh, vegetation around a certain country or around a certain area when increase in vegetation what will happen you know that when increase in the vegetation right most of the toxic gases released to the environment will be absorbed by the plants and also other thing is that you know that uh, the main problem faced by our uh, our, con uh, our uh, countries or else uh, uh, our planet earth is the release of heavy amount of carbon dioxide gases to the environment right so you know that plants has the ability to absorb this carbon dioxide gas for the photosynthesis process you know that carbon dioxide is being absorbed by the plants so my dear children right if the vegetation is more then my dear children the absorption of carbon dioxide gas is also more okay so therefore right Increasement of vegetation means decrease of emission of carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so by that way, my dear children, the reforestation is going to give out a certain right, it is going to pay out a certain heavy right, a heavy uh, or else a, a very big role in decreasing the emission of carbon dioxide gas or other uh, toxic gases. To the environment so reforestation is very important right for the sustainable development of resources in the environment then the next one given right use of traditional knowledge so traditional knowledge my dear children in the earlier times i mean before the industrialization people had different kinds of knowledge especially regarding to the agriculture Okay, I think you know that uh, when you take the country Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka was self-sufficient during the previous era. I mean like uh, when the kings were ruling Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka was self-sufficient, especially in Poland Naru era, Anuradhapura era. During these era, my dear children, right, during these time periods, when the uh, kings are ruling Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka was self-sufficient. But however, even now we are using different kinds of machines and even now we are using different kinds of agrochemicals and other kinds of genetically, uh, genetically advanced kinds of crops in our agricultural purposes. We, can't, we haven't came up to that level yet. We are still not self-sufficient. One main reason is the increase of population. That is also true. But however, other than that, my dear children, the food items that we are going to produce within our agricultural lands are not sufficient. Okay, even though we are using different, I mean like even though we are using large amount of machines, large amount of agrochemicals and other kinds of stuff. However, we won't be able to reach to the, uh, we, won't, uh, we haven't reached to the maximum potential, right? It's mainly because, my dear children, you know that we have learned these things actually. Agrochemicals, when you add more and more agrochemicals to the soil, the favorable organisms contained within the soil are going to dest uh, destroy from day by day. Then the other case is that the fertility of the soil is also getting reduced from day, by, uh, from day to another day. 
So that means, my dear children, when you add more and more fertilizer, chemical fertilizer, and more and more chemical uh, agrochemicals to the soil, the soil is getting infertile. So, plants will not be able to produce necessary amount of crops or necessary amount of yield, right? Even though we are planting it, planting these things in a uh, greater extent. Okay, so this is a main reason for the lack of food or for the lack of yield or harvest in Sri Lanka. So, for that case, as a remedy, we can use the traditional knowledge. You know that during the ancient time period, we harvested a plenty of yield and we didn't use any kind of a chemical substances or different kinds of machines during that ancient time period. However, we had enough or Sri Lanka, people in Sri Lanka had enough amount of uh, food items. So, main reason for this thing is, my dear children, they have used traditional knowledge when they are doing agricultural purposes. So, we can use this traditional knowledge given uh, traditional knowledge uh, by those people, by uh, the people who used in, in, the, in that during their ancient times. And we can moderate these things so that they will fit into the um, present environment. Okay. So, we can use this knowledge, we can moderate it somewhat and we can apply it to the present. So, by that way, we can increase our yield up to a certain extent, at least up to a like 80 to uh, 70 to 80 percent. Okay. So, usage of traditional knowledge, the other thing is that the usage of traditional knowledge, my dear children, this is very environment friendly. It's mainly because then, now the earlier times we haven't used any agrochemicals or any other machines. Right. So, therefore, definitely if we are using these remedies now, earlier remedies right now at the present, definitely these remedies are going to be right environment friendly. So, this is the second case, the traditional usage of knowledge. Okay. Then the next one, uh, the carbon footprint, minimization of carbon footprint and the food miles. So, we'll be discussing about carbon footprint, minimization of carbon footprint and minimization of wood mile, right? Uh, and also minimization of water mile, right? Water footprint, right? These things will be discussed in detail when you go further with the lesson part, my dear children, okay? So, up to now, I'm just giving out, I'll, I'll just give out a simple brief. So, here, carbon footprint. Carbon footprint means, my dear children, the amount of carbon dioxide rele released by a certain individual or released by a certain institution within a certain time period. This is what do you mean by the carbon footprint. High the higher the amount of carbon dioxide being released by a certain individual or uh, by a certain area or an institution, right? higher the carbon footprint. So, if the carbon footprint is high, then it is not environmentally friendly. Okay. So, it's very important to minimize the emission of carbon dioxide by a certain individual institution or so by a certain area, right? So, if you take the country Bhutan, right? I think you have heard about the country Bhutan, right? So, the carbon footprint of Bhutan is negative. What do you mean by negative? That means it's not going to emit carbon dioxide at all, my dear children, because greater extent of the Bhutan, the country, okay, is covered by vegetation. I mean, larger extent is being covered by plants and other large amount of trees. Larger extent is being uh, converted into forests through reforestation. So, it's a country that emit, right, negative amount of carbon dioxide within an year carbon footprint is negative. So, like that day, if, a, if all the other countries can follow up that kind of a process, then my dear children, the harmful effects which are getting caused to the environment because of these different kinds of irritants and pollutants will definitely get decreased. Okay. So, this is the carbon footprint then. Then the next one, food mile. Minimizing the food mile. There is another one called as the water footprint. 
so water footprint is the one which uh, is uh, over there uh, water for within the water footprint here we are going to calculate the amount of fresh water utilized when making one kilogram of a certain food item or one kilogram of a certain substance during the production of one kilogram of a certain substance how much is the fresh water being utilized for a certain simple example for making one kilogram of chocolate how much is the fresh water which is being utilized ah that um, that is the one which is referred to as water footprint so minimization of water footprint is also sustainable why is that because lesser the uh, water that we are going to use in making a certain food item right you know that we can preserve water very much within the environment so it will increase the sustainability right then the next one would be as you can see here it is given the food mile minimization of food mile so food mile means my dear children right the distance okay the distance which a certain food item traveled starting from the producer to the consumer okay in simple right the distance traveled by food from the field to your plate the total distance which traveled for simple example we can take like this if we are eating rice okay and the and if rice is taken from polonnaruwa area then the distance or the food mile of rice is like around 80 kilo uh, 80 90 kilometers okay 80 90 kilometers so food mile the distance which food item traveled okay distance which food item traveled from the field that means from the area which the food item has been grown and uh, to uh, to the plate of yours okay to the plate of yours the total distance traveled from the field to the plate this is the one which is referred as the food mile so you know that there are different kinds of food items which are being imported to sri lanka so consumption of those food items will definitely increase the food mile so if the food mile is high then my dear children the sustainable development is going to be low right so the next one so next one my dear children here it is given the waste management waste management you know that different kinds of waste are getting added to the environment okay mainly because of the human activities and we discuss several things regarding the waste substances which is been added to the environment over there we discuss about agrochemical waste cosmetics and different other kinds of substances which are getting emitted to the environment from our household activities like cleaning agents then uh, we discussed about the uh, domestic waste like uh, fecal materials animal fecal uh, fecal materials human fecal materials then my dear children about the different kinds of chemical substances right like that we discuss several waste substances which is been added to the environment so the proper management of these waste materials is also very important right for the sustainable development how we can manage these waste materials how we can you know like when you take these waste materials you know there are certain uh, steps which we can follow in managing these waste materials there are some certain waste materials that we can reuse okay there are some certain materials that we can recycle so like that we will be discussing about several certain things which can be done to these waste materials in maintaining our sustainable development then my dear children the energy management you know that energy crisis even for now in even for today my dear children there is an energy crisis happening in each and every country what do you mean by the energy crisis energy crisis means my dear children insufficient of energy which is produced right uh, and insufficiency means here actually 
the demand for the energy resources is now very high. However, according to the demand, right, the supply which is given is very less. That means the demand for the energy is very high even though the supply given out is very less. This is what do you mean by, right, the energy crisis, the insufficient of energy which is being produced, right, and the people will not be able to consume that energy, right, because the energy is not enough for their consumption. This is what you mean by the energy crisis. Now, Sri Lanka is a country that faces energy crisis in a larger, very larger extent. You know that within a certain year, we are facing different power cuts, right? We are facing uh, several power cuts within a certain year for sure, right? Especially during drought season, my dear children, we are facing power cuts. It's mainly because of, right? It's mainly because of the energy crisis. During that drought time period, the energy which is getting produced is not enough to fulfill the requirements of the people or to fulfill the energy requirement of the people. So therefore, the authorities should have to do several power cuts. So this is what do you mean by energy crisis? Energy management, my dear children, is very important to minimize the energy crisis. So energy management is also a sustainable development method, my dear children. Okay? Right, so these are the main areas that we are about to focus within the lesson part over here under the under the sustainable development processes. So mainly now within this part we'll be focusing about sustainable agricultural uses. So there are several uh, sustainable development processes under that my dear children mainly within the first topic we are discussing about sustainable agricultural uses over there you are given with a certain uh, so you are given with certain two figures as you can see here the topic goes by the multiple cropping multiple cropping what do you mean by multiple cropping so this is the first and foremost a step the first and foremost agricultural sustainable development use okay multiple cropping so, by using multiple cropping, my dear children, okay, we can plant two or more different kinds of crops within the same land area. So, that will increase the sustainable development. Why is that? Because we are utilizing the land up to its maximum potential level to obtain more amount of yields, right? by using two or more different kinds of crops. For a certain example, we can plant coconut with pineapple, my dear children. So that means when we are receiving the harvest, we can receive coconuts and as well as pineapple too. So multiple cropping means, my dear children, within the same land area, we are going to crop or we are going to plant two different kinds of crops or else my dear children it can be even more two or more usually we are planting two but it can be two or more even so this is what do you mean by the multiple cropping okay so by doing multiple cropping my dear children the uh, we can use the same land area up to a greater extent and the other case is that we can even do, right, or we can even get much or large amount of harvest, right, by the same land area from two or more kinds of crops. So that is an added advantage. So rather than doing this kind of a monocropping, right, it's good to do this kind of a multiple cropping. So by that way, you can get different kinds of, right? You can get different kinds of crops and you can get different kinds of yields within the same land area, okay? So multiple cropping will definitely increase the sustainable development. 
right so this is the first and foremost practice now let's see what are the other practices next one given biological pest control biological pest control let's see the biological pest control is the use of another plant animal or a microorganism which do not harm the cultivation in order to destroy pests right biological pest control so biological pest control means my dear children here we're going to use a different kind of an organism biological means that no now usually to control pest nowadays most of the times farmers are going to add different kinds of chemical substances usually these things are to referred as pesticides so usually farmers add pesticides to destroy different kinds of pests which harms the environment or which harms the agricultural environment okay so my dear children usage of these pesticides chemical pesticides i told you that these things are not environment friendly because more and more you are going to use these things right the fertility of the soil is going to disappear day by day so biological pest control is a wonderful method to minimize this application of uh, chemical uh, pesticides and the other thing right by using biological pest control methods my dear children right we can increase the fertility of the soil because you know that automatically when we are when you are reducing the agrochemicals and other kinds of pesticides which we are going to use on these pests right will definitely right, when we are decreasing when we are decreasing these chemicals definitely the soil fertility will increase okay so by the minimization of these chemical substances which are being added to the soil we can increase the fertility of the soil so usage of biological pest control methods definitely will increase the soil fertility okay so the biological pest control is the usage of another plant or else an animal or else a microorganism which do not harm the cultivation in order to destroy pest so here we are using a different kind of an organism it can be a plant or an animal or a microorganism that can destroy the pest but not the cultivation okay this is what do you mean by biological pest control in japan my dear children usually right in japan so when you take the paddy fields all the paddy fields are now, uh, when you take a certain paddy field my dear children all the drainage systems of the paddy fields right and sometimes even the paddy paddy field itself is covered with usually water no then uh, the farmers in japan they are going to place koi fish right within these paddy fields in uh, our terms my dear children these koi fish are known as carp fish okay so there are different kinds of wonderful colorful carp fishes right so you know i think you have heard about the koi, uh, carp fish rather than the koi fish so in japan this uh, this fish is named as koi fish so uh, what they're going to do is within their agricultural lands especially in paddy fields they're going to uh, they're going to keep koi fish within the agricultural lands or within the paddy fields my dear children so koi fish are going to destroy different kinds of bugs especially like mealy bug paddy bug who is harming the paddy fields and also my dear children the other case is that the uh, koi fish the waste materials given out by these fish is also uh, added to the plants as a fertilizer so this will increase the fertility of the soil and as well as these fish are uh, feeding on different kinds of bugs and other kinds of organisms who is going to harm the cultivation so this will increase the sustainable development right and also upon increasing the sustainable development my dear children what will happen especially the fertility of the soil will get increased so 
eventually the farmers will have the ability to obtain more yield right they will have the ability to obtain more yield so it is a good sustainable practice the biological pest control so like that way there are different kinds of biological pest control methods in sri lanka also in order to uh, frighten you know or in order to uh, chase away birds that that is going to harm the uh, agricultural lands right uh, there is a special structure which is been built near the wakada area of a certain uh, paddy field uh, this structure is referred to as the dia holman okay so a heavy sound is given out by this structure then because of that heavy sound birds are going to fly away okay they they will get frightened and they will fly away so like that way we can use different kinds of uh, structures different kinds of uh, biological uh, pest control methods so here by doing these things my dear children definitely we can increase the sustainability because here as we are not using chemical substances the fertility of the soil will get increase so my dear children here now let's see what are the biological pest control methods that we can use right in our agricultural purposes okay so here it is given the promecotica comenji beetle lays this is a kind of a beetle okay so the this beetle lays eggs on the larva of the rhinocoferous pharyngeus beetle another type kind of a beetle so these things are my dear children given by using their scientific names right these are the scientific names of the organism my dear children so the larva that come out from their eggs eat the larva of the rhinocoferous pharyngeus beetle it will control the population of the rhinocoferous pharyngeus beetle so here there are two different kinds of beetles okay so one beetle is going to feed on the other kind of beetle especially in the larval stage so by that way my dear children the population of the harmful beetle is getting controlled so this is a good example for the biological pest control okay the other special case here is that the particular beetle who is going to eat the other beetle is not going to harm the Uh, agricultural or the cultivation my dear children so therefore the cultivation is also getting saved and the other thing is that the pest is also getting controlled okay right then the other one given use of organic fertilizer it is environmental friendly to use substances made by transforming complex organic compounds found in animals and plant parts to simple compounds as fertilizer organic fertilizers are the decomposed plant and animal matter which help to improve soil structure and porosity to enhance the activity of soil organisms so it is environmental friendly to use substances made by transforming complex organic compounds found in animals and plant parts to simple or compounds as fertilizer so my dear children usually we make fertilizer from decayed plant and animal materials so during decay my dear children right what will happen mainly is plant and animal materials especially these plant and animal materials are complex plant and animal materials so these complex plant and animal materials are getting decomposed into are getting converted into simple uh, uh, plant and animal materials then now uh, in here right uh, simple plant and animal materials means in simple my dear children the complex structures of these molecules are getting divided uh, getting uh, depleted into simple structures very simple structures like carbon dioxide carbon and so on so you know that usually okay so you know that usually my dear children if you take uh, organic substances 
most of the organic substances okay most of the organic substances are very complex complex means my dear children if you take carbohydrate proteins lipids nucleic acids we won't be able to even draw out their structures right why you why we uh, we won't be able to draw out their structures because my dear children it's very difficult to draw out draw and show their structures they are that much complex but however you know that carbon dioxide a very simpler structure we can draw it and show this is like this is the structure if you take methane we can draw and show this is the structure so upon decomposing substances especially upon the decomposition of plant and animal materials complex plant and animal materials are getting converted to simpler organic compounds or simpler carbon uh, compounds okay so these are the ones which are considered as organic fertilizer then okay so here it is given let's see this environment friendly to use substances made by transforming complex organic compounds that means my dear children plant and animal materials complex organic compounds found in animals and plant mat parts to simple compounds as fertilizers okay so like i said it's very environment friendly to convert things found or organic substances found in plant and animal materials into simpler compounds upon doing that my dear children we can make fertilizer okay so organic fertilizers are the decomposed plant and animal matter which help to improve the soil structure and porosity to enhance the activity of soil organisms so organic fertilizers are the decomposed plant and animal matter which help to improve soil structure and porosity to enhance the activity of soil organisms so to enhance the activity of soil organisms okay and to increase the porosity of the soil these organic fertilizers are much useful for the much useful for the soil because my dear children organic fertilizers are getting developed mainly by plant and animal materials which are produced in nature itself so they are for my dear children for the soil these things are much healthy and much friendly so here healthy means actually the fertility of the soil is getting saved okay fertility is not getting destroyed over here and for the activity of soil organisms also these components or these uh, substances are very important you know that when you take uh, decomposed plant and animal substances within these decomposed plant and animal substances we can plain identify plenty of microorganisms and also other kinds of organisms macroorganisms like worms bugs and so on okay that means these substances are eco friendly right and the other thing is that these substances are also going to increase the activity of organisms who are living within the soil so because of those two reasons right these substances organic fertilizers are going to enhance the fertility of the soil so usage of organic fertilizer is also a good sustainable agricultural practice okay right then then my dear children you are given with an assignment let's see engage in a discussion about the advantages caused to the environment by using above mentioned agricultural uses so what are the advantages that we receive when we are using these agricultural uh, when we are using these agricultural practices okay now let's see like i said my dear children when we are practicing now these agricultural practices first and foremost thing that we can see is right the porosity or the fertility of the soil is getting increased how come the fertility is getting increased now we are discussing it my dear children so i'm going to discuss it with you guys so i'm going to provide three examples right i'm going to provide three examples and i'm going to discuss what is going to happen over there okay so 
like I said, first one, the fertility of the soil. So when we are using these sustainable agricultural practices like multiple cropping, okay, then biological pest control, then usage of organic fertilizer, especially when we are considering these three, my dear children, when we are using organic fertilizer and when we are using biological pest control methods, the fertility of the soil is getting increased. How come? Because my dear children, you know that here we are going to minimize the addition of chemical substances to the soil, which means here we are going to minimize the addition of agrochemicals to the soil. So minimization of agrochemicals to the soil, my dear children, definitely will increase the activity of soil organisms. So upon increasing the activity of soil organisms, right, a favorable, a favorable soil layer will get created. Okay, and also my dear children, uh, because of creation of favorable soil layer, the fertility of the soil will get increased, right? So, you, when increasing the fertility of the soil, you know that definitely the harvest that can be obtained from a certain cultivation will also going to increase. So, upon using biological pest control methods and upon using uh, upon using organic fertilizer, the amount of agrochemicals that we are going to add for the soil is going to minimize. So it will increase the activity of soil organisms and the uh, soil layer or the topmost soil layer will get fertilized or the fer fertility and the porosity will get increased because of those two actions. So this will, my dear children, create a more porous, more fertile soil. Okay, so therefore, fertility of the soil is getting increased when practicing out these sustainable agricultural practices. Second one, when you take these uh, sustainable uh, agricultural practices, my dear children, it is going to conserve our biodiversity, biodiversity within a certain area. How come? Once again, I am coming into the agri uh, agrochemical thing. When you take the agrochemicals, you know that we add these agrochemicals to the soil. So, adding agrochemicals to the soil will going to destroy pest. That is for sure we can observe. However, addition of these agrochemicals to the agricultural lands will also going to destroy favorable organisms for the environment like earthworms, different kinds of bugs and beetles. So these organisms will also get destroyed. So when these organisms are getting destroyed, my dear children, definitely that is going to harm the biodiversity. So therefore, biodiversity also getting conserved when using these sustainable agricultural practices. Number three, okay, the food items or the yield is healthy to consume and there are no any heavy metals or any other toxic substances contained within the materials or these harvest. You know that my dear children, upon adding heavy amount of or large amount of agrochemicals, you know that some agrochemicals contains heavy metals. So these heavy metals can accumulate to the uh, plant items and from plant items to the uh, yield as well. So when consuming these things, we will receive or oh, people will obtain these heavy metals into their bloodstream, bloodstreams and finally from bloodstreams to the uh, organs like kidney and liver. So in that case, my dear children, right, what will happen to us is our health will come down or our health, our uh, optimum health will uh, not be maintained from consuming those kinds of uh, food items. So therefore, when minimizing these things or when minimizing agrochemicals especially, right? So by practicing out these methods, we can minimize the uh, usage of agrochemicals. So therefore, what will happen? 
with the usage of minimum amount of agrochemicals or with no usage of agrochemicals the healthiness of the food items will get increased so when increase in the healthiness of the food item the health of the people will also get increased okay or it or it is more safer much safer to consume these food items as these thi- as these food items are not toxic or they co- or they do not contain any kind of toxic substances okay right so this is the third use my dear children the third use then the other thing by doing multiple cropping my dear children from a minimum land we can get more amount of yield okay from a minimum land area from a minim- from minimum resources we can get more amount of yield so that is also going to improve the right uh, that is also going to improve the sustainability in the environment and also it is going to cause right it is also going to reduce the food mile and also it is also going to reduce the water footprint of a certain product okay so therefore my dear children multiple cropping is also very important in protection or in minimizing the water footprint and as well as minimization of uh, food mile okay so by doing these or by following out these traditional right methods or sustainable these are not traditional methods my dear children these should be sustainable methods right so by practicing out these sustainable um, agricultural methods we can what we can do is we can uh, we can do several or we can get different kinds of advantages like that okay so i have mentioned four different advantages in detail what are those number one it will minimize okay it will minimize the infertility of the soil and the soil fertility or the porosity will get increased due to increase in the action of uh, favorable soil organisms okay second one the biodiversity is getting conserved as we are not uh, dropping or as we are not uh, as we are not going to use uh, chemical substances more often the organisms contained within the soil is getting conserved so therefore right so therefore what will happen the biodiversity of the soil is getting conserved right then my dear children the food items the food di- food items that we are going to make by using these practices are much healthy so therefore consumption of these food items will improve the health of the people okay then the fourth one my dear children mul- because of the multiple cropping we can minimize the food mile and also we can minimize the water footprint so therefore those things will also contribute in sustainable development so these are several advantages that we can obtain by practicing now these methods sustainable agricultural methods my dear children okay right then so my dear children these are the advantages so i have provide you four advantages okay you guys try to find out even more advantages you can even discuss these things with your friends right it's uh, important to do these assignments my dear children like i said the previous times also right so this is just a discussion no? you so you gather around with your friends and you just discuss what are the advantages that we can take by practicing now these uh, sustainable agricultural uses right then if you want you can tabulate those things as well right so i have mentioned you four different advantages you try to find out even more adva- even more advanced even more advantages by discussing these things with your friends okay right then so let's head on to see the next one then so the next thing or the next sustainable practice is given here this is reforestation for environmental balance so we have discussed about the sustainable agricultural practices now we are going to discuss about reforestation now let's see so reforestation for environmental balance environmental management is the maintenance of natural resources by using them in an environmental friendly manner 
to fulfill the needs of man so we know that even we discuss that thing when we are starting the lesson part here uh, about the sustainable development we know that here we are going to uh, here we are going to use different natural resources different natural uh, sources or different natural substances things right in a manner so that they will uh, so that they will provide eco friendly or they, so that they will provide environment friendly uh, things to the environment or to our biosphere okay only environment friendly things to our biosphere that means they will emit only environment friendly things or else uh, the harm given to the environment is going to be very less when we are using these things okay so environment management is the maintenance of natural environment right so that when using these things right uh, the environment friendliness or the environmental balance is maintained okay so as a result of change in the environment by man according to his necessity the forest cover gradually decreased especially paddy cultivation vegetable cultivation tea cultivation rubber cultivation and larger scale development projects were the reasons for this situation so as a result of change in environment by environment by man you know that if you take the man right so man has influenced right man has influenced to different areas within our environment especially uh, because of fulfilling different kinds of needs right different kinds of needs means my dear children here agricultural needs man need food no then for the shelter right man need some places to survive in order to protect right so when getting shelter then my dear children sometimes uh, man is going to take their or man is going to fulfill their uh, different other infrastructural uh, infrastructural cases okay so uh, like you know sanitary facilities uh, then my dear children or uh, when you take uh, entertainment purposes so like that way man is going to do different different kinds of things for their flexibility and for their uh, and for their uh, for their life cycle i mean like i mean a certain organism when a certain human being is going to live out their life right in order to, uh, to in order to develop their life or in order to uh, spend their life cycle right in order to spend their life right these oh, uh, these people my dear children they will accomplish or they will achieve different kinds of right or different varieties of things within our environment so when achieving these things or when achieving these targets my dear children the environment is getting harmed for sure for a certain a simple example let's say take a shell, let's take a house you know that each and every person need a house to live so if a certain person is going to cut down trees and uh, going to de uh, deforestation going for deforestation right for make uh, in order to make their houses then my dear children in that case to fulfill the day-to-day -day needs of the man right man is going to conflict with the environment environment the living environment so that is not a good case however since the beginning of the human age my dear children we are now conflicting with the environment so why do we con keep conflicting with the environment because in order to fulfill our day-to-day -day needs like shelter and other infrastructural things okay so therefore my dear children right it's important to have these things otherwise we won't be able to survive right otherwise we, we won't be able to live our lives but however while doing these things it's important to not to get conflict with the environment up to that much greater extent environment is getting harmed but however we should have the ability to minimize the environment harm, harmness given to the environment 
the harmful things given to the environment at least up to a certain extent. We have to minimize it. Okay, this is the whole idea of the sustainable development then. So, management of environment friendly, right, or uh, envi envi proper environment management means, my dear children, actually, here, when we are doing this stuff, our day-to-day -day works, right, we are going to do these day-to-day -day works so that the environment is not getting harmed. We are make sure in that the environment is not getting harmed when we are doing these kinds of, when we are doing these kinds of things our day-to-day -day activities, okay, right then. So, here it is given, so the forest cover gradually decreased, okay, so like I, like I said, the forest cover is gradually getting decreased, especially paddy cultivation, vegetable cultivation, tea cultivation, rubber cultivation, and large-scale development projects were the reasons for this situation. So, other than that, my dear children, now, I told you those, now, somehow, when you take human beings, because of the reasons, because of the day-to-day -day reasons, like shelter and other, other infrastructural reasons, the balance between the environment and the organisms is going to uh, trip down, especially balance between the uh, people and the environment is going to drop down. Because mainly we're going to harm or people are going to harm the environment and they're going to fulfill their needs. Other than that, my dear children, mainly because of different kinds of cultivation purposes, we are going to destroy the cultivation. I mean, we are going to destroy uh, forests and we are going to deforestation. We are going for deforestation, right? Like what kind of cultivations? You know that rubber is very important uh, commercial crop. So, to plant rubber, then tea, then coconuts. So, when we are doing these plantations, large area is needed. So, more often people go for deforestation and they plant the necessary commercial plants that they want. So, that is not a good sign, right? So, here it is given tea cultivation, rubber cultivation, vegetable cultivation, right? Then paddy cultivation and large-scale development projects are main reasons for what? For the, for the change of environment, right? For the change of environment balance, right? So, man is the main person who is doing these things. So, these agricultural crops are mainly being planted by man, right? There is no other any person to do these kind of things, no? Man is the main organism who is doing these kind of kinds of things, right? So here it is given. At present, we experience the harmful effects of the decrease of the natural forest cover. Therefore, in order to reestablish the environmental balance, it is necessary to do reforestation in suitable areas. So, my dear children, the other issue. Now, we know that when we are fulfilling our day-to-day -day needs, we are conflicting with the environment, right? We are making certain, uh, we, are, we are making certain kinds of dangerous impacts to the environment, especially by removing the forest cover. So, upon removing forest cover, my dear children, you know that different kinds of toxic gases are going to emit. Especially the amount of carbon dioxide which is going to emit to our atmosphere is going to increase because if there is no forest cover, then the photosynthesis process will not happen efficiently. So, therefore, carbon dioxide will not get absorbed more efficiently. That means, my dear children, we are paying our future at risk, in a heavy risk because you know that carbon dioxide will definitely increase the global temperature which is also referred as the global warming so when increasing global warming polar ice caps will dissolve then other different kinds of so terrible environmental incidents will occur okay main reason behind these things is 
reduction in forest cover or deforestation. So it's very important to reforestation. It's very important to go for the reforestation process. Okay. Why is that? It's because, my dear children, there are some certain areas which we do not do cultivation anymore or which we are not going to do our cultivation anymore. There are some certain areas, okay, like aban abandoned areas, okay. Now, these areas have been abandoned. That means, my dear children, we can take these abandoned areas and we can regrow the forest cover within those areas. So, that will promote, right, that will promote the vegetation and also uh, it will help to absorb more amount of carbon dioxide and also my dear children here by doing reforestation we can get a good ventilation as well okay can get a good and a proper ventilation as well okay you know that the plants plants are going to purify air okay mainly because it is going to absorb carbon dioxide gas from the environment and also by providing a good amount of shelter right by providing good amount of shelter right you know that plant is going to conserve plants and trees all are going to conserve the environment too so reforestation is a very good habit or very uh, it is a uh, it is a ha habit or it is a uh, Thing which we can follow in order to improve the balance between environment and the man and we can reduce the conflict between the man and the environment by doing the reforestation okay so I'm not going to talk here about the reforestation processes right that will harm the man the activities of human beings okay that means my dear children I'm not going to tell that uh, destroy all the cultivated lands and do the reforestation. I'm not going to do that thing. For an example, take that country, Bhutan. So I told you that Bhutan is a certain country that over there the emission of carbon dioxide is negative, carbon footprint is negative. However, the people are still living in there now. So the vegetation over within that country is very high when you compare to the other countries, my dear children. However, the number of people who are living in that area is not decreased. That, that, that within that area or within that country, the number of people who are living haven't decreased. Same number of people are living, but still they have managed the environment in a proper manner so that the emission of carbon dioxide is negative. Okay, so that's a wonderful example for this process, the reforestation process. Okay, so here what they have done is they have done the reforestation in a such a manner that, right, their agricultural lands are also being saved and also the forest cover has also been regrown up to a certain level. So this is what I'm talking about now. We should have to do the reforestation, but not by harming our agricultural lands, but in the vacant lands, but in the abandoned lands, my dear children. Okay, so you know that there are plenty of abandoned lands. There are plenty of vacant lands. Okay, so within those lands, if we can do the reforestation process, then it will improve the sustainable development for sure. So this is about the reforestation and the environmental balance because of that okay right so my dear children we have discussed several things regarding the environmental balance and my dear children the sustainable development okay so within that uh, within this part my dear children we may have, we have mainly focused about how to manage our resources and how to manage our environment in a manner so that we can also use those things and also how does the future generation can use okay 
So our main aim in sustainable development is to use our resources, to use these resources in the environment so that we can also use them and also future generations can all, uh, also have the ability to use these things. Okay, this is the main aim behind this sustainable development. Right. So my dear children, with that part, I'm going to finish up this chapter. Within the next chapter, we'll be discussing even more further details about these sustainable development practices. Right. So in the next chapter, we'll be discussing about other factors and other processes that we can follow to do the sustainable development. Okay. So we'll focus about those things in our next chapter. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.